Hi everybody. Today there are some updates with uh, bug fixes for you or for several um, plugins. And there's also a new plugin, or actually it's two new plugins, but um, we'll get to that later. Um, before I'm gonna show you the uh, updates. It has been reported for something that sometimes it looks like this, and this is not intended. This always happens when you have a project where you use the um, something plugin and um, maybe accidentally uh, removed or bypassed the um, master instance of the plugin, saved your project and opened it again so that the um, channel instances didn't know what to do because no one was telling them which uh, desk is used. But I fixed that now. So let's get to Reaper. We have something in the master. And as you can see, it switches with uh, what the master says. But if I deactivate that master plugin, it says waiting for master. Or if I switch off that this is the master plugin, both say waiting for master. There was also an issue that you could have uh, two instances of the um, plugin running as master. So you had competing masters and set one to desk three maybe and the other to desk one uh, and the other plugins uh, didn't know what to do. And this is not possible anymore. If you click master um, when you already have a master, it just says um, master instance already present. Same thing uh, is for the um, some channel plugin. When it is set to something follow mode, so you see it follows what I say in the something master plugin. And if I deactivate that plugin, some channel bypasses itself and is waiting for a um, something master again. So it says uh, no audio processing, something master missing. And if there's a something master instance again, it will be ready to go. And there was another uh, thing about some channel. Let's see that. Um, it was reported that these um, readouts for the knobs don't change their position when you turn another knob. But that only happens if you have a Reaper project with no channels, just a master channel. So if you're just loading the plugin into the master to play around a bit without any audio or any, uh, any use for the plugin, it can uh, lead to strange behavior. As soon as you start uh, opening the first uh, track for MIDI or audio or whatever, um, it will work as intended. And we have a third picture here. Um, this is um, what the guitar amp looks like for many people. This is how it should look like. And if you set the parameter number, what is it, 42 to 0, then it will look like this, um, what we saw uh, in the browser, um, because 0 is out of the um, valid range for this parameter. Actually, I don't know how uh, people set that to 0, because from the plugin itself you can't set it to 0. But for those who had this problem, um, I made a little uh, change in the code so that if the parameter is out of the valid range, it will automatically jump back into valid range. So um, you will always see this picture. And there was another thing that has been reported. And this was um, the thing about the denoiser. So I'm going to show you um, what it did um, and what I hope I solved now. Um, I have here uh, two microphones for the snare recording, snare top and snare bottom, and they should be synced, of course. Um, so if I hit play without the denoiser on, they are perfectly in sync. And when I then turn on the denoiser for, um, for the snare top microphone, here's what happens. And that, of course, is not usable. 
And this is because um, the denoiser plugin needs to uh, buffer some audio in order to correctly denoise it. So this is not a real-time uh, processor. Um, so uh, you shouldn't use it during tracking or for um, what we would call input channels or something like that. Um, this is really only for post-production. And now the plugin um, reports to Reaper uh, which latency delay it will produce. So Reaper plays back the audio from that track earlier. So it comes out of this plugin in sync with the other tracks. So now the code is changed, the plugin is running, and as you can see, the snare microphones are again in sync. But keep in mind that the um, plugin itself uh, does a delay, so Reaper automatically plays the um, track a bit earlier, so the delay is compensated. So if I put that behind this sum channel, you'll see that uh, this sum channel plugin has to uh, be processed earlier than this sum channel plugin. And that um, would do strange things if you have um, automation here. Um, the automation always will be late. So um, put the denoiser plugin always in the first place. And you can see um, the sum channel plugins are again in sync. So much for the um, bug fixes uh, of the existing plugins. And uh, now let's get to the new plugin. The new plugin is a plugin um, that came from a basic idea um, that Adam Steele once told me. Um, he kindly asked, uh, what do you think about this idea? And I found it a great idea. So um, now we have the Tukan Studios console meter. And it looks a bit like this. And this is a bit small, I think. So um, don't worry, it will always scale to the space you give it. Um, so let me put that here. And as you can see, uh, we now have 16 uh, different meters. And we can switch that from the menu to as many meters as, as we wish to have. So um, 8, 12, 16 or 24. And you will also need another plugin, and this is called C Meter Send. Put that on the um, on the vocal track, and here you can um, define on which of the meters um, it should be displayed. Then, so um, let me take meter six and close this window and open console emitter. And when I now play back, you see on the meter number six, the vocals are playing. In a hurry, there is always so much to worry. So now we want to know that this is vocals. So I right click the meter, rename it vocals. And then click anywhere else and now it's called vocals. If that is too small for you, you can just scroll the plugin and make it bigger. You could also give it a color by right click, give it a color. Um, you can switch on and off the, um, the numbers, the names and the colors from the menu. So now I put um, C meter send on 12 tracks and um, all, every track has its own um, meter and I gave them some names here. Um, so let's see how, uh, how it will look if I play back. And now you see the basic idea. So you have a, um, a meter that is always on, on top or on a second screen or whatever, and you can see what's happening. And if you rearrange the tracks uh, in a different order, um, this will always stay the same, so you um, always have orientation on that. So that's great for tracking and maybe for keeping an overview um, while mixing. And now I've used um, 12 uh, sends, so um, you can see uh, the last send is number 12. 
1 uh, through 11 are um, displayed in red so that they are already in use. And um, if somewhere I put another cent, it will automatically grab the next free meter. There's a lot more to be said about um, these um, console meter plugin and uh, C meter cent, but I'll do that in a following video, uh, maybe tomorrow. Um, so play around with that a bit. I think uh, the most of it is self explaining. Now that's it for today. I hope you have fun with the plugins and bye bye.